I'm going to cover today some basic steps in how to create and modify a pivot table. The first thing I do before I create the pivot table though is I format my data as a table. So on a Mac you'll simply select any cell inside your raw data and go to tables and choose whatever format you want. On the PC you're going to go to the home tab and then under styles choose format as a table and you'll have those same options. Once you have your data formatted as a table you'll see lots of options that you didn't have before. So each one of these down facing arrows is a filter and if your column contains numbers it automatically gives you number filters. If it contains text it automatically gives you text filters. The other benefit to formatting as a table is if you add any cells to the right or below this table and the way you get to the bottom is just press command down arrow control down arrow on a PC. If you add anything to this table your table will automatically swallow it up. It will auto expand and if you have a chart based on this table it will automatically update which is really nice. So there are lots of benefits to formatting your data as a table before creating a pivot table. Okay, moving on. Now that we have this formatted as a table, we're going to create a pivot table. So on the Mac, you find that option under Tables, Summarize with Pivot Table. On the PC, you choose Insert, Tables, and then Pivot Table. So we're going to go ahead and select this and it just asks you, it automatically selects the table that we created which is table 4 and asks you if you want to create it on a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. I usually choose new worksheet so I'm just going to click OK. And I really don't like grid lines so I just get rid of them immediately. So now that we've done that you see this this raw pivot table, this empty pivot table over here. And then you see this pivot table builder over here. Let me break this down a little bit. So all of the column labels that we had in our table over here has now become field names over here. And then you have these four quadrants or fields down here and all you do to add any one of these field names to one of these quadrants is you just drag it down. So in this upper left corner you'll see report filter and we'll get to that a little bit later. And then these two fields over here they're very self-explanatory. You have row labels and column labels. So whatever you want to display as the rows you drag down to row labels. Whatever you want to display as the columns you drag down to column labels and then the values are whatever values you want to show. So the first thing I'm going to do is take date and drag that down to row labels. So what you'll see over here in these row labels are all of the dates from January 1st to November 30th. We'll modify that in a minute. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag medium over to the column labels and now you see this starting to take shape here. If we want to, the beauty of a pivot table is if you want to switch them around, you just drag and drop. We're not going to do that. I'm going to move medium back. But that's how easy it is. When you, whatever you want, you just drag it. Okay, so we're going to start off showing visits. So now what we see here are all of the visits for each of our individual mediums broken down by day. And you can see we have the total over here and you also have total down at the bottom if we press oops, if we press command down arrow, I accidentally hit it twice, you'll see the grand total down here. And I'll press command up arrow, control up arrow on a PC to get back up to the top. So you can see the basic structure of our pivot table and it's working just fine. But let's say we want to pull revenue down. 
Well, now it's getting a little thick and chewy, and I really, really don't like this. I just think it gets way too complicated to try to interpret it. So rather than pulling down another value, what I would recommend doing is taking medium and creating a report filter. So what that does is that adds this report filter above your pivot table. And then you can choose to show all of them at once, or you can cherry pick. We'll deselect all, and then we'll just show organic. Or we can just show CPC, or whatever we want. Clear the filter, close out of this. I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to pull revenue back out. But I just wanted to demonstrate how you can use a report filter. Okay, so now that we have our data in here and we have the structure we want, we can start doing some basic cleanup. So a lot of these things are preference for me, but it gives me an opportunity to show you how you can customize your pivot table. So if you pull, pull a number of value down to this values field, it'll automatically give you the sum of, which is exactly what you want. However, you can pull a non-numerical value down, such as medium, which has text values associated with it, and it's by default going to give you the count of. So that's just something to keep in mind here. We're just going to have the sum of visits over here. But in your pivot table, this is how it shows up sum of visits or count of medium and in my opinion I just think that looks hideous. There are lots of ways you can change this label. I used to do it the hard way and then I discovered that if you just select the cell that you want to change you can just type over it. But you'll run into one problem if you try to use the same label as one of your column labels in your table. So I'll just show you I'm going to change that from sum of visits to visits. And you get this error here. But there's a little workaround for that. All you have to do is just add a space to the end and it'll accept it. So that's what I always do. Moving along, I don't find labels like column labels and row labels very intuitive. So what I do is I change these according to whatever I'm showing. Now, you want to make sure you don't change this until you really have your table in place the way you want it because let me show you what happens. So here I'm going to change this to medium and here I'm going to change this to date. But if you switch these, let's say we move date over here and medium over here, now this says medium although it's really a date. So you'll have to manually change those. But that's worth it to me because I find that when, once I set up my pivot table, I don't usually modify it very much. Now another thing I always like to do is add thousand separators. Anytime I have numerical values greater than a thousand. And you just find that option under home. But for whatever reason, when you add this thousand separator, it also adds two decimal places. So I just go ahead and get rid of those. Notice how anytime I click off of my pivot table, my report builder goes away. If I select it, it comes back up, which is exactly what we want. Another option you have with pivot tables is the ability to group. So I'm going to show you how to group with this date column here. All you have to do is select any cell inside of it and just right click. And on the Mac, choose Group and Outline and then Group. On the PC, you just have to choose Group. And it gives you these options of how you want to group. It also lets you know the first and the day after the, the last date you have selected. I'm going to keep those as is. Now, it gives me these options because it detects that these are dates. You can group anything. You can even set up custom groupings like regions and things like that. But because it detects that we have dates, it gives us date-oriented options. I'm just going to choose months, which is going to collapse all of these individual days into months and click OK. 
So that's exactly how I want to show my data. A couple last things I'm going to show you is one, the ability to stack items in the row labels or column labels. So if I choose date and then drag medium below it, what you're going to see here are the months and then embedded below months are the individual mediums. Now if I take medium and I drag it up, it's easier to drag date down, you'll see we have medium and then the dates listed below and the visits broken down. Now by default, Excel displays the data in this collapsed format, which I'm not a big fan of. If you want to change that on a Mac, with the pivot table selected, if you choose pivot table here, you have all the options associated with a pivot table. On a PC, you'll see a pink tab called pivot table tools, and then you can choose design or options. The layout options we're going to look at are under the design tab. But in the Mac, it's just here under design and then layout. So you'll see by default, it gives you this compact layout. But you can change that. You have outline layout or tabular layout. I'm the biggest fan of tabular layout, although I'm a little bit torn on them for formatting reasons. But I'll just show you both of them and you can decide yourself. So what outline does is it just takes the secondary row label and bumps it into its own column so it's not so compact and cramped. So I like that a lot better. Well, what it does is it gives you the total up here on the same row as the individual labels, which is kind of nice, although it's a little counterintuitive to have total at the top. So the other option you have, if you'd rather have totals below your data, is this tabular layout. I don't like how it adds this additional color, but you can customize these options. That's outside the scope of this video. But here you can see we have affiliate, then the months broken down, the visits, and then down here we have the total. And you see that for each one. Again, I'm not a big fan of the formatting, but you can customize the formatting. And those are pretty much the basics of pivot tables that I wanted to show in this video.